So while I'm getting set up here, um, I just want to thank Dr. Mifflin for going down with me. This is the second trip I had to Bolivia, and um, the first one was in um, 2010. I was invited by Bill Jackson, who's the uh, director of Desret International. He called me one day in 2009 and said there was a need for some cornea transplant training. in Bolivia, so I was able to get 10 corneas from the Utah, Utah Lion's Eye Bank and 10 from my former eye bank I used to work with in uh, San Diego. And uh, we did several cornea transplants down there. You've seen the pictures of La Paz. <coughs> this is the Sahama Volcano. The plain here that we're looking at is actually uh, higher than the peak of the Grand Teton Mountain. Okay, it's, uh, Grand Teton is like 13,700 feet. This is 14,000 feet. This is where we're standing in the Sahama volcano where Mark and I went with Claudia. Can you see that? Can you see the rocket? We, you know, just walking along the plain, it was okay, but if you go up a flight of stairs, you start to feel it. Yeah. <laughs> this is the institute right here. This was founded in 1975. Um, and this is the institute where we work, the Institute of National Institute of Ophthalmology. And these are the founders. Back in 1975, some of the early Bolivian uh, ophthalmologists that got together and said, we need a place to treat our charity patients. And they founded this institute. And this is Jose Baraquer, came down from Bogota and was there during the inauguration of the institute in 1975. Uh, this is, these are our post-op cornea transplant patients from June of 2010. And uh, this is my son-in-law who went down with me to take photographs, and he's a medical student here now. And this is Dr. Joel Moya, who's the director. And uh, this is Andrea Lozano, who is an observer here in Cornea two, uh, two years ago. And she's currently doing a Cornea Fellowship in Mexico City. And these are the, uh, the three profesores that <laughs> <laughs> went down. You remember Jean Kim was one of... Uh, Mark Magee's Cornea Fellows a couple of years ago and uh, did a great job. So um, the Institute put on a symposium for cornea transplants and phacos. And we taught these lectures, and I was really proud of Mark and Jean. They taught all of their lectures in Spanish. We weren't planning on doing that, but when we got down there, I, I, was, I was impressed with, you know, Mark has lived in South America before, and he speaks really good Spanish. Uh, Jean, uh, is really bright. He picked it up pretty quickly. <laughs> but he gave all of these lectures in Spanish. It's one thing to just talk Spanish. It's another thing to speak the medical, you know, talk about cross-linking and refractive surgery and all that. You don't learn that in, in school. But they did a great job. So this is what we did in the evenings uh, as we uh, did surgeries during the day. And uh, Mark actually did the very first DALC and the first DSEC ever done in Bolivia down there during uh, two months ago. Did a, to a total of 28 transplants. Most of those corneas came from here. A few from Seattle, a few from San Diego. And um, we also did some FACOs and some SICS uh, extra caps. And a few other minor procedures that were, uh, were done. We saw a fish hook actually inside the anterior chamber that had been there for four days. And one of the, I was really impressed with the local doctors who took that out. This is a collage of some of the pictures of the week. You can see we're busy, a lot of activities going on. So just kind of a summary of, of what we did with 28 cornea transplants. So the, the goal, when I went down there two, three years ago, I was there, they don't have an eye bank there, and they had tried to have one, but it, uh, it had failed before. And so we started working with Dr. Moya, the director. He came up here last year and he met with the iBank, met with Mark Mifflin, and uh, obtained since last year government approval to establish an iBank, plus um, a promise of a million dollars to help fund the construction of the iBank. So that looks like it will become a reality next, next year. 
Uh, this is a sad story of a patient that Claudia knows really well, a patient I operated on, 38-year-old who was fine until about four years ago when she opened a package intended for her husband. It turned out to be a bomb. It blew up in her face, destroyed one eye, uh, severely scarred the other, lost a few fingers, damaged her face, her leg, and unfortunately, her husband left her because she was dying. And so now she's destitute, had a major, you know, a failed graft, and I replaced the graft. I hope she gets some vision left. But these are the type of cases we had down there, very, very difficult cases. This is a video I put together kind of showing some of the activities I wanted to show you. The music is actually played by one of Dr. Mifflin's patients. He's a professional guitarist. And this is Dr. Pettis Roca, who is the director of the residency program, a very skilled surgeon, and one of the founders of the institute. This is the waiting room we saw when we walked in there on a Sunday afternoon. We had 65 patients to screen. Selected 25 or 30 to do a transplant, several of the cataract operations. I was particularly impressed with how, how kind and nice these Bolivian people are. They're just great to see. A lot of uh, corneal scars, a lot of uh, just uh, corneal ulcers. A lot of keratoconus, full of keratopathy. And I thought you'd like to see the ORs, very nice operating room. We uh, had two ORs we used, and uh, two surgeries in one of them. Usually Gene and I were in one OR, and this is Mark in the other. He is, I think, getting, he was removing a dermoid, a limbal dermoid from a 10-year-old girl. And the dermoid has been excised so you can see um, the site and he's preparing the lamellar tissue to do the lamellar patch graft. It's Dr. Kim doing a transplant. This is an old uh, WEC microscope, uh, similar to the one I think that Dr. Olson and I used when we were residents back in, <laughs> many years ago back at UCLA. Those, those scopes are pretty good. Dr. Duffin doing the surgery. I'm doing, a, I think I'm doing a, a transplant now on a patient with a corneal ulcer, a corneal ulcer scar. Dr. Fernandez. Being assisted by Dr. Fernandez, who's a, a corneal surgeon there. So you can see the, the OR setup. Um, it's not unusual in Latin America to have two, even three surgeons operating in the same room, which is, is actually a very efficient way to do it with one large back table. And, uh, the turnaround is, is very good. This is our trusty <laughs> circulating nurse. <laughs> and you can see this, uh, this corneal scar here that we're removing, a very dead scar. This is Dr. Andrea Lozano. And this is Dr. Lozano. You remember her from two years ago. She was here. And she's one of, one of the things we did. We allowed uh, her and some of the other local doctors to. She came down from Mexico to be with us during that week. But she uh, did uh, one or two of the transplants. So we helped her with that. So the purpose of these trips is not just to go down and do surgeries, but to help them through establishing the eye bank and through training to um, enhance their ability to do surgery. One of the things that we learned was that um, you have to take sutures out a lot sooner down there than we do here because of the atopic disease, the solar uh, exposure and uh, just inflammation. It's not unusual to 
I think this is the, the DALK that uh, Mark is doing. The hard ones are a lot easier to take out. And this is, this is me on that case with, um, with the corneal uh, ulcer scar. And there's a cataract also yeah. removing a rather soft cataract, doing an IA with an open sky irrigation aspiration with a simple manual technique. Some are, a few of our patients had very limited visual prognosis. This particular girl um, <laughs> was putting in one of the final sutures actually was very, very happy. She had a good, good prognosis and very happy with the outcome. So much. One, uh, this is just a picture from the uh, video monitor which they installed since we were there in 2000 uh, for training purposes with the residents and other faculty. So it's very likely that there will be an eye bank down there within about 12 months. Um, there from the government. The main challenge, as has been discussed already, is public education. That's going to be the big challenge, is getting the people. That'll be a slow process, but we're hoping that um, that will come about. Um, I've done a lot of transplants in South America with in Chile and in uh, this is our last El Salvador, on Central the America, of and Bolivia, with tissue that's uh, older than 10 days. And cell counts are around 2,000, 2,200. <laughs> and it's amazing how well those patients do. They really do quite well. And we have done in two days 20 This is one of the last cases we did. Big smile. <laughs> and for the Good. residents and fellows, those who might want to go to Bolivia or other countries to do some extra caps or SICS surgery, there are some. I have contacts in several countries down there. That could help with some training. It's not an easy thing to do because you're not only learning you can, I think. a different language, a scope that doesn't work too well, uh, lens on, the, on all the instruments because they don't use uh, disposable drapes, and uh, a lot of other challenges too. But um, for those who might be interested, there's a good training opportunity. This is the person who's playing the guitar. Okay, he, uh, Mark did a fake on him. He was a very happy patient. This is the residency program director, Dennis Roca. He's the one that took the fish hook out of the interior chamber. He also had a This is a little boy that had a thorn in his corny. Actually, almost in the anterior chamber. That was the nurse donated some of these idea caps to us. To this is Cloud Master. This is the patient that I was operating on. And she was very happy and had about 2,100 uncorrected visions in this day. One of the third year residents, Dr. Chievich, who would like to come here to be an observer as soon as she gets the English class. to uh, just in the interest of time, our time is up. Newspaper article, nice coverage by La Paz. The, the uh, medical school uh, was very kind and gave us, presented us with diplomas, honorary professor diplomas. Uh, that's certainly not necessary, very kind. So plans for um, the future. In the next year or two, we're hoping to have an eye bank established. I'm working with the humanitarian department of the LDS Church to get some equipment donated for an optical dispensary and lab and also low vision services in, in the institute. Um, there are about 35 to 50,000 children, school-aged children, <coughs> in La Paz area that um, need glasses but don't have glasses, don't have the re resources to buy glasses. Um, 
So just in closing, a lot of blind people in the world, solutions, uh, difficult, a uh, lot of work has been done to, to help the masses, but a lot can be done just with an individual. Let me just show you a very brief video. About 15 years ago, I was in El Salvador. And this is a young girl who was normal until she was three years old. And became became bilaterally blind from cataracts. She had an extreme no and she's been blind for since age three, and she's 10 years old now. So I was asked to remove her cataracts, and we, we did uh, the first one. It, I didn't know exactly what to expect, but decided to do it through a small incision and just a manual aspiration through a FACO type incision using a, a Simcoe irrigation aspiration. A lot of fibrous uh, tissue in the capsule, but was able to uh, get the cataract out and <coughs> place um, a rigid PMMA lens in the, in the back. And I never saw her smile until after the surgery. She was just a very sad girl, couldn't go to school, couldn't interact with her friends, but this is the first day after the surgery, and you can see that smile on her face, and that uh, type okay. of result makes it uh, very worthwhile. And those of you who have done trips like this, and even patients like this here in the state, you know that feeling. <laughs> so she says she's very happy that she can see again. Uh, it, uh, it was about, uh, we didn't actually push her too much. I mean, she had very good count fingers vision, probably 21. I'm sure she had some amblyopia, but at least she was able to see. So just in closing, um, Swedish diplomat Dag Hammarskjöld, some of the old timers will remember him. He was Secretary General of the United Nations back in the 1950s and unfortunately killed in an uh, airplane crash in 1961, peacekeeping mission to Africa. But he has a quote that I remember. He says, it's more noble to give yourself completely to one individual than to labor diligently for the salvation of the masses. This is an individual who was laboring for the masses as Secretary General of the United Nations and did a great job. But he also recognized the importance and value of just helping one person. And I think uh, we are very fortunate to be, have a profession where we can help one person see better. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Claudia, for telling us about Bolivia.